TMZ TV. I believe I mentioned uh, the disruption of the world yesterday. That's a scriptural phrase. And on the heels of that show, the pirate, Mark Halkus, the pirate, challenged me to, quote, do a deep dive on the disruption of the world. I'm going to do it because you don't cross the pirate. If you cross the pirate, he makes you walk the plank. And I don't want to do that. Hello, everybody. Martin Zender here. This is a fascinating topic. I usually save my cologne for sexual topics, but the disruption of the world is better than sex. So, little Ralph Lauren here. All right, now I am ready to go. The reason I'm getting into this, this is a scriptural phrase, the disruption of the world. It occurs 11 times in the Greek scriptures. And this will give us a great revelation concerning our relationship to sin versus the circumcision's relationship to sin. That is, the body of Christ versus the Israel saints who are known as the bride of the lambkin. This is another great distinction. It's a very detailed one, a very intricate one. And we're going to do the deep dive because we want to know our relationship to sin. I'll give you a little hint. No, I'm not. I'm not going to give you a hint. I'm just going to dive into it. Now, for this, we have to go to Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. I'm going to read from the concordant version of the Old Testament. Eventually, but first I'm going to read from the King James Version. In the beginning. See, it's already wrong. The King James Version is already wrong because it's not in the beginning. Because that word the is not even in the Hebrew manuscripts. There's nothing there. It's in beginning. It's a beginning. It's not the beginning. Okay? Anyway. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. So says the King James Version. The earth was without form and void. Would God make something without form and being void? Well, let's find out from Isaiah 45, 18. The answer is no. Here's Isaiah 45, 18. For this is what the Lord says, who created the heavens. He is the God who formed the earth and made it. He established it and did not create it a waste place, but formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there was no one else. The Lord God created the earth to be inhabited. He did not create it without form and void. But doesn't the King James Version uh, suggest that it was created that way? Oh, yeah, of course it does. Here it is. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Sounds like he created that way. It was created that way. It was without form and void. And yet, that's not true because Isaiah 45, 18 says he made the earth to be inhabited and he did not create it a waste place. Now, so why does the King James use and the earth was a chaos and vacant? This word was is the Hebrew word haya, H-A-Y-A. And they translated the same word became. In Genesis 2-7, where the scripture says, and Adam became a living soul. Same word, haya. They translated it became in Genesis 2-7. Why didn't they translate it? Be, why didn't they translate it became in Genesis 1-2? The earth became without form and void. Instead, they say the earth was. So the same word translated became in Genesis 2-7, and was in Genesis 1-2. Why did they do that? Because they're the King James translators. That's what they do. That's their thing. They, they don't translate. They, they interpret. They personally interpret the scriptures. Never did they dream that someone would come up with a concordance where you could check up on these guys. And to think that some people think that the King James Version, a translation, is the inspired word of God. No, my friends, only the Hebrew 
The Old Testament and the Greek and the New Testament are the inspired words of God. That's why a concordant is so handy, because you can look at the original words and find out what they mean in the context and then compare it to how it was translated or interpreted in the case of the King James Version and the NIV and the NASB and all these other common English versions. And you can see where the discrepancies occur. So let me read it now from the concordant version of the Old Testament. This is beautiful. In a beginning, there it is, in a beginning. That's true, the A is also in light face type. But in the King James, the was is in dark face type. But they're, they're, they're translating a word that's not even there. So in a beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became a chaos and vacant. This is consistent with the way the concordant translated Genesis 2-7. Adam became a living soul. The King James translated Genesis 2-7 the same way, but they... Translated it was in Genesis 1 2. And it gives us a whole, the whole wrong idea because there was an event between the creation of the first earth and the time when man came upon the second earth. There was an event. There was a wild and hairy event called the disruption of the world. That first earth, that, that first world, world is the system and the earth is the physical thing with every world there is a corresponding system a system is the way things are done in that on that particular earth so the first earth that god created to be inhabited he created it perfect god is perfect in all his contrivances that was disrupted now you don't get the word disrupted in the hebrew scriptures no Hebrew scriptures speak of the disruption of the world, but the Greek scriptures speak of the disruption of the world 11 times. And I'm going to show you those times. So, what? Now we're going to go to the New Testament. What is this disruption of the world? Now, the 11 times that this word disruption occurs, the concordant version translates it disruption. And I'm going to tell you why it translates it disruption. When you see the Greek word behind the word translated disruption by the concordant version, you'll see that disruption is a perfect word. I will give you this clue right now. The King James Version translates the Greek word. I'm going to tell you what the Greek word is in, in a second. They translate it foundation. The foundation of the world. But that gives us, it's just a vacant word with no foundation in the Greek word. I'll show you that in a second. And it doesn't give us any illumination whatsoever of our relation to sin. It doesn't give us any illumination whatsoever of the great event, the cataclysmic event that occurred in between the creation of the earth that was meant to be inhabited and this wild and hairy event that caused the earth to become a chaos and vacant. And it is upon that chaos and vacancy, on the service of that old earth, that God's spirit moved upon the waters. It vibrated. In fact, that's what the concordant version says. God's spirit vibrated upon the waters. And he brought out of the chaos the land masses, the flora and the fauna. I went to high school with them, flora and fauna. Cute girls. Not as cute as Tryphena and Tryphosa. So he brought the plant life and the animal life, and then he created the first human, Adam, all this happened in the recreation of the earth. So what we're reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 onward is the recreation of a disrupted earth. And I'm going to show you why, again, it's important to understand this word disruption. But the word foundation is way different than the word disruption. In fact, it's the opposite. A foundation is something sturdy, something sure. But a disruption is something that's destroyed and, well, a chaos and vacant. The word translated disruption by the concordant version and translated unaccountably foundation by the King James Version is the word, Greek word, katabole. 
K-A-T-A-B-O-L-E with a little accent on the E. Gotta have the accent. Kataboli. What English words come to your mind when you hear the Greek word kataboli? Well, catabolic, catabolism. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. It, well, let's define it from the dictionary. There are two metabolic processes. One is anabolism and one is catabolism. Anabolism is, quote, requiring energy to grow and build. Grow and build. That's an anabolic process, anabolism. Catabolism, on the other hand, a catabolic process, uses energy to break down, to break down. Catabolism is the sequences of enzyme and catabolized reactions by which relatively large molecules in living cells are broken down or degraded. Catabolic. It degrades. It breaks down. How you can translate this Greek word? Oh, in the concordant, the English elements of that word are downcasting. So all 11 times that the concordant version sees this word catabol, uh, catabole, which is the English element, cast down, they're basically talking about the casting down of the world, the casting down of that first earth. Why was it cast down? Well, the definition in the concordant dictionary, which is in the back of the concordant literal New Testament, says disruption of the world or cosmos prefiguring the result of sin. There was sin in the universe that really first manifested itself. You see, when, Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned, that was not the first sin. It was the first sin on the second earth. It was the first sin post-disruption, but the disruption of the world was the first evidence to the universal convocations that there was something amiss in the, the celestial realms. And my thinking on this, and also the thinking of other intelligent people, is that the disruption was not caused, well, it was caused by God ultimately, of course, the absolute viewpoint. Relatively, it was caused by disgruntled spiritual beings who saw in the creation of the earth something very bad, that spelled doom and gloom for them because God founded the earth to be inhabited by human beings who would be progenitors, starting with Adam, of the Christ who came out of Adam, who would eventually bring the universe in subjection to himself through his blood, including spiritual forces of wickedness in that realm that is among the celestials, as Paul writes about in Ephesians chapter 6. For some reason, the spiritual beings now and then are so uh, incognizant of their own needs that they don't want the blood of Christ to bring them in subjection because they're disobedient and they're grouchy. They're anarchists. They don't want God. And so anything that suggests their conquering, even though their conquering is going to be their eventual blessing, they're not that far-sighted. The only reason we're that far-sighted is because we listen to the scriptures and we see what God has to say to us through our apostle Paul. They don't get it. And so they wrecked it. It was the downcasting. God didn't do it, absolutely speaking. The evil forces did it. Satan, I am imagining. So what does God do? So as these spiritual beings disrupt the first earth and bring sin visibly, manifestly into the universe, they are demonstrating their antagonism. So what does God do on the heels of that? He starts it again. I mean, it's not like this is his plan B. It's all plan A. And so he brings forth something else. He brings forth man, which was probably his intention for the first earth, but he needed this downcasting to happen, to make a point. God is always making points. He creates, he destroys, and he recreates. This is his pattern, by the way. If you take the first three verbs in Genesis, then you will know what God does throughout the Aeonian times. Created by the Elohim were the heavens and the earth. The first verb in the whole Bible, created. 
Yet the earth became. That's the second verb. Not was. Became. That's a verb. The earth became a chaos and vacant due to its downcasting, and the Spirit of God vibrated upon the waters. That's from the concordant version of the Old Testament. Three verbs. Created, became, and vibrated. There's God's modus operandi throughout the entire scriptures, and it explains what's happening with your life right now. You're created, then you're disrupted, and then you're recreated into a new creature, better for having gone through the disruption. This is it. God's in a big, fat, hairy, glorious, predictable rut, as I've been telling you for years now, decades, in fact. Creates, destroys, and recreates. In fact, this is the pattern for every good novel, every play, every movie. The beginning, the middle, and the end. The creation, introduction of the characters, the disruption, you get your characters up a tree, and then the resolution, or the denouement, where your characters are redeemed, they are saved, they are reconciled. It's a beautiful thing. So Satan, of course, tries to disrupt the human race. He tempts the woman, but it just always ends up working out against him. And so the woman ends up producing the seed that will actually crush his head. He can't do anything right. Then he tries to send spiritual beings down to, to, uh, to uh, spoil the race, spoil the seed. He has the, the celestial, uh, demonic celestial beings uh, having intercourse with human women and to foul the blood, and they create freaks of nature. And so God brings on the flood. But again... It's a long process, but it's a brilliant process. There's no accidents happening here, ladies and gentlemen. So, the foundation of the world, King James, 10 times foundation of the world. From catabole? You can't do that. Maybe if it was anabole, you could do it. I went to the prom with her, anabole. Nice, nice girl. You can't do it. So the, 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 the disruption. And, and again, this offers great insight into our relation to sin, which is why I'm bringing all this up. I might not be able to get into that today. I was planning on it. But I have five pages of notes. So this might, there's going to be a part two. Not might. There will be a part two. I got so much more to say. I'm actually excited about this topic. I mean, I'm excited about all my topics. Well, you know what? Yesterday, I wasn't that excited, but I did it anyway. And I felt better after I did it anyway. And yesterday was an actual demonstration that you don't need to be in a good mood or you don't need to be in a good way, in a good place mentally or physically in order to be spiritual. That is a fantastic truth, but this is too. This is too. So there's not only the Greek word, catabolic, catabole, that is indicative of the necessity of translating this downcasting and not foundation. Those are opposite concepts. A foundation, no, different than a downcasting. There's actually physiological proof that this word is disruption and not foundation. I'm going to end with this for today. I got much more to say. I'm going to blow your mind tomorrow, but this is mind blowing right now what I'm going to tell you. I mean, the word catabole ought to be enough, but in Hebrews 11, 11, this is a Wild use of catabole. By faith, Sarah herself also obtained power for the disruption of seed and brought forth beyond the period of her prime. The disruption of seed. This is really illustrative of what the word catabole means because her seed disrupted, her egg disrupted from her ovary. Now, nobody knew at the time that I mean, how the intricacies of the human, the female reproduction system work. But I'm going to show you two video clips now that I got from YouTube that illustrate what a egg, what an egg does when it when it comes forth from the ovary. It actually bursts out. And God is telling us this in Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, Sarah herself also obtained power for the disruption of seed. You know what the King James translates that? They couldn't translate it foundation because it's stupid. The foundation of seed. So they translated it to conceive. They translated it to conceive. One time to conceive. Ten times foundation, one time to conceive. The concordant version being consistent. 
and using, generally speaking, one English word for one Greek word, they translate it consistency, disruption. But when you look at this, it doesn't seem to make sense. The disruption of seed. Watch these two videos on what the seed looks like, the egg looks like when it comes from the ovary. This is fantastic, and here it is. Each month, one or other ovary releases a single egg, an event known as ovulation. It is brought about by a series of complex interactions between the pituitary gland, the ovaries, and the uterus. Folks, there were no eyewitnesses or cameras at the disruption of the world, but here is a picture of what it looked like. A tiny, tiny picture. Boom. Something, it, 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 it. It was cast down, it, it burst, it broke, something broke. And you're seeing a picture of it, it's like pfft, the disruption of seed. How did God know that? Before we had little cameras that could go inside a woman's reproductive system and show us what that looks like. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, by the way, you have got to see a video. I'm going to link it down here. It's called Fertilization. I'm going to end with this. I got much more to say. It's called Fertilization. I'm linking it down here. It is scary. My God, it is It is amazing what the sperm go through to get to the egg. The whole process, it, 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 these things are living, these little sperm things with their little tails in their heads and they're swimming. It's just incredible. Do you remember my friend I told you about who couldn't believe that uh, in the virgin birth, just so fantastic. And I said, the virgin birth, I, that makes sense. The guy would just breathe on a woman and she becomes pregnant. The actual process, what really happens, that's what's hard to believe. I can believe that God goes, and a baby starts growing. That's easy to believe. But, to, but what actually happens, oh my God. I want you to watch this video. I'm linking it down here. It's called fertilization. Please watch it. And when you do watch it, I want you to think of this, that the same God who does all those things in those secret places of a woman's chambers is the God who called us, here's a clue for tomorrow's show, before the disruption of the world. The same God who promises to bring us to the celestial realm and seat us at the right hand of God is the same God who is doing these hidden things in the inner chambers of a woman's reproduction system. It's so fantastic, you got to watch it. And you know what's even more fantastic? That God has chosen us before the disruption of the world to be sons of God and to rule and reign with him among the celestials. I got more tomorrow and you are not gonna wanna miss it.